Alright, first things first, let's get the trigger warning out of the way. I am about to drop some heavy criticism that many might not agree, with and if there are some fanboys in here that can handle their game getting criticized, the door is located over there in the corner. Before we begin there are some things I should clarify, first of all, I have sunk a major amount of time into this game, several thousand hours to be precise. That significant playtime is a result of my love for the game, and I want the best Warframe possible. Extensive playtime does come with some caveats, however, as the hours clock by you notice a lot of small things that are hard to notice at first, and a few major ones that work as detriments to newer players. I wanna get it out of the way that I could make a whole video only going over the astronomical amount of bugs the game has had and still does. Like teleporting Terry, early access Revenant, and the repulsory EOS portals. Instead of doing that, I want to point out a few trends and core issues that seem to persist through the updates and have been for years. The first major point in this category is their large inconsistency in new frames released and how many of them seemed rushed. I understand that they most likely have different people that design frames, but I question why they seemingly don't have a common group that looks over and polishes frames before they are released. The result of this is that we sometimes get frames with good scaling and a cohesive kit with synergy like Nidus, followed up with frames like Titania that has kit that seems like the result of a drunk brainstorm where five completely different ideas were thrown into a blender and is spat out as an incohesive mess. While on the subject of Warframe inconsistencies I want to highlight the major inconsistencies in Warframe scaling. I wonder how they still release frames that have all the tropes of a DPS frame but have a kit saturated with flat damages and procs that provide no value in the later game and especially against armor, like Ember. While giving other frames moddable abilities like Peacemakers and Kaura's Whiplash, or close to infinitely scaling damage like Saren and Equinox. Sometimes in combination with major tanking abilities like Mesa, making the quote-unquote pure DPS frames a complete joke. Why are they so scared of giving frames percentage HP damage, as an example if Ember's abilities did a percentage maximum HP damage to enemies instead she would be equally fast on all levels and not be oppressive in low levels, two problems solved at once. Another issue with frames is how unreasonably difficult or obnoxious many of the standard frames are to obtain. A few notable examples here are Trinity, Mesa and Harrow. While long-time players will eventually be able to grind them out, it works like a prohibitive barrier for newer players. It also raises the issue that in many circumstances primed frames are easier to farm and more acquirable than their base counterparts, which makes no sense from both a lore and gameplay perspective. Effectively making a good chunk of the base frames into pure MR fodder, while we are on the subject of things that are hard to obtain, we should highlight that there are a lot of weapons that would make good early game weapons but for some reason have way too high resource costs, MR locks or farming locations that are prohibitive for new players. Essentially leading to horrendous items that are pure MR fodder for the players that would realistically be able to acquire them. Some weapons that come to mind here as examples for each category are the Quanta, Burst and Prime. Bratton and Lotto Vandal. Lastly I still wonder why we see sub 5% drop chances down to below 1% for items and mods that are borderline mandatory to make certain weapons or frames work like Cyclone Kraken for machetes, and Augur Secrets for most of the damage frames. And we won't even talk about condition overload. The last core issue I wanna go over quickly is time gating and artificial lengthening of content through resources that have a cap to how many you can obtain a day through time gating. It is understandable that they have used it to slow down the progression of players so they won't run out of content as quick in the past, but I feel like it doesn't serve a purpose anymore since veterans will be sitting on large stockpiles of them while players that are coming in now is met with a tall barrier of Natane and invasion mission resources that they just have to wait out. I have a feeling most players would like to be able to target farm what they need instead of having to wait for the alert or invasion they need to pop up. 
people that have reached end game is most likely gonna stick with farming Kuva, Arcanes or Endo instead and might never even pick up gear needing time gated resources. Especially when a good chunk of them are trash. I could go over the Riven system as well, but that is a topic almost worth an entire video all to itself and has been covered extensively in the past by other content creators. I want to end this video with just stating. If you made it this far then congratulations. And in doing so, all of these opinions are mine and shares with a few other people I've had this discussion with. If you enjoy all these hassles then good for you, but us other people strongly disagree and hate the practices digital extremes are using. And lastly we do have a discord, but I'm not sure how safe that place is. Now get lost.